Hello everyone, Eric Andrew Wajo here. I'm, today I'm here after YCS Richmond with one of my closest friends. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know how you did. Hey, my name is Max Lehman uh, and first YCS, crazily enough, I scraped by to day two with Scareclaw and I'm here to share it. So, start off with a lot of, that is not how we profiled it out. Okay, it perfect. Down, yeah. <laughs> nice job. Actually starting, uh, free acro. So a lot of the level threes read similarly. They all have the first line of text of special themselves to special adjacent to a scareclaw you control or in its column. And then the other threes all have extra effects. So this one gives your scareclaw links in the EMZ 300 for each defense position monster. Astra summons itself. And this one is the best one. It gives you attacks per defense position scareclaw you control. Um, not reading is the reason I day two because no one would read Astra properly. Uh, you would go, you would frequently, I'll get to the link three at a certain point, but you'd get to the link three, you'd go battle phase and they'd see 3k on your board and then they wouldn't realize that this was allowing it to attack three times and then they, you'd just see their face sink. It was so funny. And then three below and you max out on all the names for consistency's sake. Uh, this one gives your monsters piercing, which does come up. And then you get to Rekar. Also has the effect to summon itself, but this is the good one. I'm sure you're more than familiar with Monodium. You search any Scareclaw spell trap, then if you have three or more, you draw one. Let's scoop that up. We're playing one Scarecash. Uh, it's a nice name if you only have like Acro, because this one actually attacks on its own, and it's good for extension if they remove your normal, just because you can special this one, because you are unfortunately a little dead in the water if they deal with your normal right away, but this helps you push through. Uh, one Visa Starfrost, you can do some fun Barone things on occasion. It enables Astro Loud. It's just a nice one-up to have in the deck. It allowed me to play through some stuff that I otherwise normally wouldn't have been able to. And that's it for engine monster-wise. And then we go into non-engine with DD Crow. Uh, Fenrir, you can almost consider engine. It's so amazing in the deck. You just summon it in defense every time. Uh, it searches either another Fenrir, or if you already have Scarecash, or most of the time it's just getting Scarecash. It allows you to, on your first turn, if you have like another level 3 in hand, uh, try to fiend for that extra draw by getting three defense position monsters on your board. It's just an amazing piece of the end board. It helps break boards. The card is uh, band worthy in my personal opinion. And then Ash, Droll, Nibiru. Uh, as, if you had to ask me how my hand trap lineup felt, uh, I feel like it might have been matchup dependent. I feel like main deck Droll was really crazy for me. I feel like main deck Nibiru was mandatory against Manadium as well. Uh, DD Crow, I feel like did not do. I had one tier matchup. I don't think I drew it, and then it won me one game against Bank. It won me the match against Vanquish Soul in round five. So I'm hesitant to talk crap about it, but I feel like it was the weakest one as far as the actual deck is concerned. We we sleep on Droll in this house. Yeah, I I have been against too many combo decks. I will never not main deck Droll unless we're in like a hard control meta. Uh, so then we go into spells. We're on three Reich Phobia and one Wraithsoft. Um we have a Talents in this list coming up. This was thought to be as a nice just starter get Fenrir, because it it's almost a starter if you have any other name, because Fenrir searches Scarecash to get you in your engine, and this obviously uh, goes ahead and gets you your Scareclaw. Monsters, your opponent controls is under attack and defense per, and if you have three or more defense position cards, target a card your opponent controls, destroy it. The field spell did so much, all three effects were relevant. Against Manadium, you would frequently look at your opponent and go, uh, you can't summon the Meek because this is reducing their stats. You would cheese people on that. The removal was so crazy, just baiting stuff as well. How many times did you see Wraithsoft? Wraithsoft? Oh my gosh, I saw <laughs> maybe twice. I think I'd really, as funny as it was, I think I'd probably cut it. Uh, to Arrival, I don't, I haven't tested much with one, but you definitely don't play three. It's not once per turn to revive, but I don't think I've ever tutored for it more often. And you'll it's see not like you're second. extending into anything. It's kind of just like a nice utility piece for for like if yeah. you get interrupted. You turbo to the link three if you need it. It's more of like I'd like to search at turn three just to actually set up because you want a bunch of monsters under your link three. Defanging card is uh, crazy in the pure build. Prevents your uh, link three from being targeted or destroyed by card effect. Banishes anything that it battles, which did come up at one point. I think it was against a Therian ABC player who ended up from searching. And then you can also banish a Scareclaw link once per turn to pop a card your opponent controls, so it's more removal. This 
If I wasn't tutoring for Twin Saw, which is just further ahead, I think this would just be the thing you always fiend for because it just makes your Link 3 the single most annoying monster in the game. <laughs> it sits there and then you punch them in the mouth on the follow-up because they can't deal with it. Uh, going into strictly non-engine at this point, two thrust, one talent. Uh, I would not have these cards without the man filming right now, so I gotta thank him very dearly for that. You wouldn't have any of the cards in this deck without me. <laughs> they don't even know how poor I am. <laughs> oh, Trevor, this... give me a Scarecrow deck. Oh gosh, I think I didn't draw thrust as much as I would have liked to. Talents, oh my gosh, talents came up once. I think I'd rather play three of it and then maybe mess around with hand trap ratios. As far as thrust, I think. It tutored for terraforming more often than anything else, <laughs> just because I got I realized I would do it after droll and then I had to set. And so that was just the best target at that point. Speaking of which, terraforming. No explanation required. Duster and Twin Saw. So Twin Saw lets you tribute a Scareclaw for cost to pop two cards your opponent controls. Unfortunately, it's not up to two, so you do have to target two. And then you can banish it from your graveyard if you have a Link 3. If a Link 3 or higher exists on the board, regardless of who controls it, you can banish it from Grave, and then neither player can activate effects of Link monsters on the field this turn. This was how you sort of prevented yourself from losing to SP Little Knight right away, because the way I realized I started having to play this deck is you just turbo for the Link 3, and it's unaffected by anything but links. So if you just banish this, then you prevent yourself from losing to Little Knight that turn, and you OTK on turn three. All right, uh, moving on to the extra deck. One shot, I'm sure it's very, very interesting and spicy and special. Uh, this is not part of the deck profile. That's just something I got from Prize Pack. Where did you even find event. that? Okay, I got it. It was <laughs> Prize Pack as a side event. Leave me. Okay, okay. Three Lightheart. Uh, I should probably be facing these the direction. Uh, on summon. Searches the field spell, and then once per duel, you can bring it back if you control Beast of Starfrost. One very funny thing that you always that you can remember to do is uh, the search is not once per turn. So if you have Starfrost, for example, uh, when I find the Starfrost, if you Starfrost pop Lightheart uh, and then just summon this back, you link it. You link the one in the main monster zone for another one in the extra monster zone, and then just search another field spell for follow up, and people just boggle their eyes at it. I think some Monadium players know to do that, and I think others don't. I don't know if it's correct in Monadium, because you always want to link one to, like, for next turn just to get a Scareclaw name on field, but that is a really cool interaction in the pure deck just to guarantee follow-up. Oh, yeah. Because they might have draw next turn. And then two Tryheart. I don't feel like the third ever came up. Switches everything to defense, and it's unaffected by defense position monsters. Once per turn, target a Scareclaw and Grave, summon it, search another Scareclaw. That does lock you into Scareclaws, but by that point, you're fine. Typically. The only non-Scareclaw in your deck is, like, Fenrir yeah. that you're actually summoning. Yeah, and this is this is the end of the line. Like, you don't make this and then try to go into other stuff, so you don't care about the lock at that point in time. One Little Knight, I wish... Uh, once again, a card my friend lended me. I would not be able to have it otherwise. I wish <laughs> the card wasn't so necessary but it is so necessary and it's so easy to get the banish effect because any any name becomes the link one so you always have access to the banish uh dark lingaribo and access code oh and an underworld goddess finish out the links i really really wish that these would have come up more but i feel like i never made any of them i was i'm always paranoid about getting able locked uh never happened dark i didn't find myself in a place very often where i would try to go into an access code climb i don't think i made it either and i never went against anything that required me to go for this there's parts of me I'm not going to say extra because it's the cheap option of Prosperity, but now Prosperity is cheap too. So I think you would probably maybe try to find a spot for Prosperity in this deck. Uh, for Xyz, Fortune Tune, Zeus, and Typhon. Uh, again, loan to Typhon. Beautiful card. And I was loaned all three of these, actually. You were um, the entire deck, dude. <laughs> Leave me alone! <laughs> so, um, yeah. so, why don't you tell us how many times you made Fortune Tune? I made Fortune Tune one time against Flu. I, it was one of my two losses. Uh, game three, I had drolled him. He was able to, uh, he thrusted to set uh, Featherstorm, and I just started crying internally. The best I had in hand, I think my hand was like double balone. 
You like and normal summoned one, yeah, special the other, made fortune tune into Special the other, smack, make Zeus with two materials. It felt awful. And then he just proceeded to wombo combo on me anyway. Yeah. This guy came up, but it didn't floodgate my opponent. Again, in round eight, I faced Brave Plunder Patrol. I don't know how the man made it there, but he's a legend. <laughs> uh, this card was able to let me draw the game as opposed to just straight lose the game. Because as it turns out, after you grind out all their stuff, the biggest they can get to is just about 3k, and if you leave this in defense, your field spell says it exactly ties with this right here. <laughs> so I was able to win by 100 life in time. Or, draw it out. And then, one Barone and one Astrolab. These actually did come up quite a bit. Uh, Vsauce plus Reichhardt is Barone. Um, I don't force myself to make it every time. It's just a nice option that comes up on some crazy hands, and Astrolab is... Uh, once they see you're on pure Scareclaw, they start to lose the fear for this card, but then it's just random removal and it scares the hell out of people. And then that's it for the extra. So we go to the side, and honestly, my side is really simple. I am not the biggest brain side deck player, so it's just five three ups. Three Encore. I didn't see a single Pearly player, so it never came up whatsoever. Well, two Druid Swarm and a Magnemut. I prefer this over three Druid Swarm because I'm greedy and I like card advantage a lot. 3 Evenly, 3 D Barrier came up a lot, or, well Evenly came up a lot, D Barrier, round 11 against Runic Stun I think is the one time D Barrier came up. I drew it against a Monadium player and he still proceeded to kick my teeth in, the deck is so crazy. And then 3 Old Man, this card single handedly, oh yeah just shout out to my 3 different rarities, all poverty, but <laughs> This was the reason I was able to make it to day two, was the old man. I think my, it was game three against Rescue Ace, round nine. Uh, they start with the Dia Bellstar line after they had drooled me. So I think after they sent for cost, they had three in hand and then normal hydrant. And I just negated the normal and was able to OTK afterwards because they couldn't get anywhere from that. So going into day two, X2-1, I didn't know you wouldn't be able to make it top 32 even if I'd won out, because I think only X2 or better made it, and not all X2 made it. I still had a heck of a time. Round Day two was so weird. My round 10 opponent does not show up. I found that so insane. I'm just, we take those, I guess. And then round 11, I get the written feature against Runic Stun. I knew what he... I, <laughs> that was an experience. We weren't even meant to get it. That was the third try. So they went to... They explained it to me like this. The judge went, okay, so we wanted to go to table 38 because it was like some crazy hash list and they wanted to see that. Neither player was there. Then they went to... Then they were supposed to go to table 31 right next to me, but they had already started playing. And so I just looked at the judge like... Because they were like... They thought they wanted 30, but then they wanted 31. So I'm like, so why don't you just give it to me instead? You were going to come to me anyway. And the judge was like, sure. So I, <laughs> so I just got a feature by asking for it. I was so happy. Me, when I asked for the feature match, you get it. I knew what the guy was on because I had seen him at top tables hovering around. and like, I knew what I was in for. My opening hand, game one, I don't... <laughs> I love the caption. Oh my god, it's yes, like, the caption. It was literally, it's like, literally he's smiling. The, one looking of the best at his, hands in your deck. Literally, he's, like, he's <laughs> smiling looking at his weird hand was the quote. The hand was... Oh hand gosh, was absolute was gameplay. Against Runic Stun, the particular five were these five crazy cards right here. I win the die roll, I pass. <laughs> and uh, we just barely went to a draw, and I ended my record at X2-2. Realistically, he should have had it. I, I will confess this fully. I am not ashamed of it. So he scooped with like a minute and a half left somewhere around there. We go into siding. I start trying to side for going second. Um, I start fumbling and shuffling. I'm like, okay, I'm not gonna power shuffle because you know, if he has the time card, he has the time card. And then I, I look at my side deck and realize there's 18 in there, so I have to put in three more because I'd just forgotten to put them in. And then Judge goes like, what's this right here? Because I had a stack of like 10 cards that somehow I just didn't pick up. I guess I was trying to fumble and I didn't get the whole stack. And we just shuffle and time gets called before we get to start the game, and so we draw. I feel really bad about it, but at the end of the day, I know it didn't affect either of us making top cut. Yeah. So... It was, it was a heck of a day. Uh, nothing can subtract from the happiness that I have from just making it this far, and I appreciate this man for giving me the deck profile and allowing me to even play the deck today. This man was the hookup. I think the only cards I have to my actual name... The Judgments. <laughs> I have 
the, the I have poverty judgment. I have sixty percent of the side deck to my name, and like the non-engine that is the hand traps. Everything else was from him or his buddies that he talked to to get me the deck. All right, Couldn't Mr. <laughs> Mr. Maximum Lemon. Any other shoutouts? Uh, really, just you, man. You came through so hard. Uh, any of the other zoo crowd? Uh, you know, I think shout out to the COVID members the of COVID Zodiac gang. tournaments for making this abomination of a <laughs> mat that I got to play on. I'm sure. I hope. I don't know if uh, the guy has the PNG, but I would love to just get that in the video so other people can order this mat and walk around with it. It would make Archangel Legio merch is just this mat and the Isaac Field Center. Oh yeah, and also this man made a Field Center in my cat. What a legend. Uh, that's really it for the shout outs, man. Uh, All right, I'm just man. So happy. Super glad you could come out. Super glad to get your profile. All right, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll catch you all next time.